I want to turn from the from the customer and from the technology to the company, to each of your companies, and, and talk about leadership and ask you each to talk about how you conceive of your role as the leader. And I think Marissa, early in your tenure at Yahoo, you did you did some some interesting and controversial things. You wanted people to come into the office more. You wanted to change the logo. And I I'd like to know at a high level how you think about leadership. And then how you think about, you know, do you, do, were some of these things intentional as signals of what your leadership would be, or are we reading too much into them and they were just policy things you wanted to do? Well, I think that I think about leadership as listening. Um, it was interesting, you know, I've had, been lucky to have a lot of great mentors over my career, and one of them is Eric Schmidt, and Eric said this thing once where he was like, good executives confuse themselves when they convince themselves that they actually do things. Hmm. He was like, when was the last time you designed a web page or wrote a line of code or designed anything? He was like, you know, your job as an executive is to listen to the team, to, to set a vision, listen to the team, and then get things out of the way so they can run at that vision as fast as they can. And so, you know, that was really my approach, especially coming into Yahoo after such a turbulent period, was to get in, really spend time talking to people. And so, you know, I went down, sat in the cafeteria, you know, for like an hour or two every day for about my first month there, just listening to people. Just, I'm actually quite shy, so it was, it was a challenge for me, but letting people just come up, anyone who would come and talk to me. Mark Mark's to very them. shy too. He, he <laughs> like, understands that. And just, and just, you know, striking up conversations and getting a lot of insights into one, where people thought the company should go, and then two, also what was getting in their way. And so there were things, you know, for example, like the work from home, which I, I you know, I hope it's not my legacy, but I, it definitely um, got more of an external response than it even did internally. Uh, but we, you know, I, there were definitely people who said, you know, hey, you know, it feels like this is our chance. It feels like this is a moment where we could really reinvent the company. Um, and one of the issues that we have is, you know, every week we have to stop you know, all the productive work we're doing and call this person who didn't come into the office. And actually I had less of an issue with people who have really good working from home setups. A lot of times people, when people work from home formally, it works really well. My brother works from home. I have nothing against working from home per se. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But we did have a lot of people who were just, okay, you know, traffic's bad today, the rain is bad, waiting for the cable guy, like I'll just work from home. And I think we all know that in that setting, you don't necessarily have the most productive day. And there were a lot of teams who brought to my attention, like, this is getting in the way. You know, can you say something to the company that says, you know, let's all try and be, and be in the office more? Uh, and so you know, that was really a response to a request from, from the different people who were working really hard on some of these key products. But you were very aware, you were aware of two things by doing that. One, that it was going to be controversial, and two, that you were leading, correct? Um, not, I mean, not really, as I said, I mean, I don't know that necessarily it's the right stance, certainly for the industry or the world at large, but it was the right thing for Yahoo at that moment. So we weren't trying to make a broader commentary on working styles or working from home. We're just saying, we were just saying, look, people are more collaborative, they're more inventive when they get to come together. You know, we were really proud of the time, around that same time we released our uh, Yahoo weather app, which took Flickr photos and put it up against weather information. So, you know, if it's raining in Tokyo and you go to Tokyo, you actually see a picture that it was posted on Flickr of Tokyo in the rain. And so it's, it's really nice. But, you know, those things don't come together unless, you know, someone from Flickr runs into someone from weather, like, you know, in the hallway yeah. or in the cafeteria and has that conversation. And so, you know, it was, the, it was the right thing for us at that moment. Mark, you're... One of, one of the key elements of your leadership style is that, and I teased you about not being shy, but you, you are very clear about what your values are and what you want the values of Salesforce.com to be. And I, I say that because they are distinct, right? They're, they're not like other companies necessarily. They're opinionated in a, in a very strong way. And, and so can you talk about, share what those are and also... What gave you the thought that it was okay to do that? It, well, it's not the way all CEOs behave, right? Yeah, I would say that, um, you, know, uh, you know, there's basically two parts to that question. And the first part, you know, our core values in our company start with trust. Uh, we heard about that yesterday, but for us, no one does business with us if they don't trust us. And trust and trust of our customer, that's number one for us. That is, it, it starts on a platform of trust a culture of trust, and then it moves to customer uh, success and growth. That, that becomes paramount uh, for us, and then we have innovation. 
And that is, th those things have been critical to us. We've also become very well known that on the first day that we've started Salesforce, we took 1% of our equity, 1% of our profit, 1% of all of our employees' time, which has turned into running 25,000 nonprofits and NGOs for free on our service. We've given away more than $100 million in grants. We've done more than 1.1 million hours of volunteerism in schools and hospitals and homeless shelters all over the world. Um, we even have a whole group uh, this week in Sri Lanka working with Room to Read, which is an amazing NGO, building schools. That, that's just status quo for us. And then, you know, where I think I got called out this year and what was a difficult moment for me as a leader for sure was, you know, we, we also believe very strongly in equality. We believe in um, equal rights for our employees, we, for them to have those rights that is equal pay for women is critical. We've looked at every single one of our um, female employee salaries and we've adjusted it um, against all of our male employee salaries. We actually did $3 million approximately of employee salary adjustments, you know, so that we can say we pay women the same that we pay men. We looked at every single salary and we also provide equal opportunity. We provide equal access to women. Um, that's equality is our core value where we fight for that and then that also turned into a major issue in Indiana because there was RFRA where all of a sudden the governor of Indiana said well you know what uh, gay rights are not something that we're going to necessarily support here in the state they passed legislation that got a lot of our employees quite anxious and angst because they don't want to be discriminated against they came to me and then I rallied other CEOs and, and we saw this incredible outpouring of support uh, for employees um, in this country.